We are launching the next generation of Apple Silicon for the Mac by debuting three breakthrough chips at the same time. MC Pro is worse than M2 Pro and it's more expensive than last year? This is really a scary event. Well, hi, this is Anjana from the Tech Girl channel. Apple had an online event yesterday and they released three new Apple Silicon chips, the M3, M3 Pro and M3 Max, all at the same time. They also announced the new Macs with these M3 chips on them. It was a mixed bag for me. I have a lot of thoughts about the new chips and the hardware. Here's everything Apple revealed and especially Apple skipped to mention at the Mac event. Let's get started. First off, the whole event was based on a Halloween theme scary dark vibes, spooky music, black and white theme. It was a very well-made event as usual with great transitions and production quality. Actually, the more impressive part came at the last when they revealed that the whole event was shot on an iPhone 15 Pro Max. But ironically, the iPhone 15 camera was the cheapest equipment on set. Reminder of the gear was all super expensive high-end camera gears. In terms of announcement, Apple revealed the M3, M3 Pro, M3 Max ships at the same time. Historically, the Pro and Max ships were usually announced later. The M3 family of chips is based on 3 nanometer technology. The M1 had same architecture as iPhone's A14 processor. The M2 had the same architecture as the A15 processor. But the M3 ships are based on A17 Pro chip. The M3 chip have marginal performance improvement over M2, around 10 to 15 percent. The GPUs on M3 has gotten a slight better improvement around 20 to 25 percent. They also now have support for mesh shading, ray tracing, and dynamic caching. The M3 can be configured up to 8 core CPU, 10 cores of GPU with up to 24 gigs of memory. An important upgrade is the M3 has ProRes Encode Decode engines built in, which were available only on the Pro and Max chips before. This means YouTubers, video editors will see better performance even from M3 chip and may not need the Pro and Max chips for some decent video production work. The bad part, M3 still starts with 8 gigs of RAM. The new Pro models now come with M3 chip, as we will see shortly. 8 GB on a Pro model laptop at over $1600 is not right at all in 2023. Otherwise, the M3 is a nominal spec bump. The M3 Pro, on the other hand, is where I had a lot of confusion and what's going on moment. On the surface, M3 Pro can be configured up to 12 core CPU and 18 core of GPU, with up to 36 gigs of unified memory. The good part, the base memory on the M3 chip chips are 18 GB versus the 16 GB on the M2 Pro. The confusing part came later when I realized that the M2 Pro came with 12 core CPU and 19 core GPU. That means the M3 Pro has fewer GPU cores than before. This is even worse on the base model. The base M3 Pro comes with 11 core CPU and 14 core GPU. The base M2 Pro on the other hand comes with 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU. That's not the end of the bad part. In the 12 core M3 Pro, there are 6 performance cores and 6 efficiency cores. The 12 Pro M2 Pro had 8 performance cores and 6 efficiency cores. Even the base M3 Pro has fewer performance cores than the M2 Pro, 5 versus 6. There is even more bad news. Along with the reduction of performance cores, the memory bandwidth also has taken a hit on the M3 Pro chip. The M2 Pro came with 200 Gbps memory bandwidth. That is now reduced to 150 Gbps on the M3 Pro. That's over 30% hit on the bandwidth. Fewer performance CPU cores fewer GPU cores, lesser memory bandwidth, all seems like a significant downgrade from the M2 Pro, considering the price that it still comes with, which we'll discuss later. Even with the higher performance 3 nanometer processor, the gains will cancel out due to these downgrades. I will test them out in depth to give you more accurate results. So make sure to subscribe to get notified when that video drops. What about the M3 Max? Thankfully, we don't see a downgrade to the specs except for the memory bandwidth. M3 Max can be configured up to 16 core CPU, 40 core GPU, and 12 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. M2 Max has specs up to 12 core CPU and 38 core GPU with 8 performance and 4 efficiency cores. One thing to notice, the base M3 Max with 14 core model comes with only 300 Gbps. This was 400 Gbps on the M2 Max. The 16 core model comes with 400 Gbps memory bandwidth. I really don't understand why the specs of these ships are so confusing this year. I did some research and I will share them towards the end of this video. One more thing, the M3 Max can be configured up to an impressive 129 gigs of memory. That's insane for a laptop this size. There's a lot more to just 
just talk about the M3 chips. My next video will be detailed analysis of M3 chips. So stay tuned for that. Now let's talk about the new Mac that comes with these new M3 chips. First off, the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro with touch bar is dead. It was an odd offering like I explained in my previous video. So it's a good thing that it has been discontinued. In its place, Apple is introducing the 14 inch MacBook Pro with an M3 chip. It's a good offering, latest hardware with M3 chip, but at a higher price. It starts at $1,600 for the base model. The bad part, the base model comes only with 8 gigs of memory. We have seen it before and 8 gigs is not sufficient at all for a pro laptop. If you spec it up to 16 gigs, the cost will easily be $1,800. Not budget friendly by any means. Other than the spec bump to M3, there are no new design changes or updates when it comes to replacing 13 inch model. It's the same design we have seen and loved on the 14 inch model for the past two years. Next, updates to 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. It's just a processor upgrade this year to both 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pros this year. Both models get M3 Pro and M3 Max chips with up to 128 gigs of memory. The design is same, same hardware, same camera, same battery life of 22 hours. Oh, there is a new color for the Pro and Max ships models called the Space Black. Basically, it's matte black. I have my concerns with this color because any nicks and scratches will show the aluminum metal. We have seen this problem with the M2 Midnight MacBook Air. We'll see how this one holds up. Both the 14 and 16 inch Pro models comes with the same price starting at $19.99 and $24.99. Now, don't be happy about that because both 14 and 16 inch base models now come with fewer GPU cores, fewer performance cores and lesser memory bandwidth. Even the base M3 Max at $3500 comes with fewer GPU cores and less lesser memory bandwidth. So even if Apple technically didn't increase the price, same spec device are all more expensive than before. So don't be misinformed that all is well. This was truly a scary Mac event for Halloween. Okay, then Apple released the updated iMac 24 inch. Let's see if this is any saving grace. The only change coming to this iMac is the updated M3 chip in the place of M1 chip. Not even the M3 Pro chip is coming to the iMac. Some minor thing that have changed internally other than the chip is the M3 iMac iMac comes with Wi-Fi 6E versus Wi-Fi 6 on the M1 iMac and Bluetooth 5.3 instead of Bluetooth 5.0. Same color, same design, same price and now can be configured up to 24 gigs of memory. Again, this isn't a good thing either. The M1 Mac was introduced in May 2021. Changing just the chip with all the same other hardware at the price is technically a price increase. In 2023, iMac 24 inch at $1500 still comes with 256 GB SSD storage which is also very slow low and with just 8 gigs of memory, same two USB 3 ports, same lightning cable accessories at $1500 is not a good pricing in my opinion. Even to get a different color, you need to upgrade to the higher end model. Again, we will review the iMac in detail in an upcoming video. Okay, why are the M3 chips so confusing? Why does it seem like a downgrade despite using the 3 nanometer processor? From what I read, the 3 nanometer chips were not ready to be shipped by TSMC at scale. We're still refining the process for more efficient and powerful 3 nanometer chips called the N3E version. The one used for Apple Silicon is of N3B version, which is less efficient. But this could be a last minute decision to ship them with 3 nanometer ship from the N3B process while TSMC is still refining its N3E process. This could be a transitory phase while the M4 could be more stable and high performance ship. We will have to wait and see. Please subscribe to the channel and also like and share the video. I'll see you all in another video with more details about M3 chips and new MacBook Pro recommendations with current Mac lineup. Until then, this is Anjana. Bye-bye.